What's good, everybody? I'm Nino Brown, and you are watching Debbie DJs. And guess what? I'm on my guy, Andy Fam, for like probably the fifth platform we've been on together. He's my brother from another mother. Andy, how are we doing tonight, buddy? Good, man. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. Ah, I appreciate you, my guy. We're going to be talking quarterbacks. I know we're both excited to talk about the fresh meat, this, this new class, and maybe even a newer class. So uh, let's get right into it. We're going to be talking. I want to talk to quarterback temperature all right i'm gonna hit you with a couple guys you let me know where the temperature's at in these guys and how you feeling all right all right first guy Jaden rashada just recently committed to georgia what's the temp at cold <laughs> 10 words or less where are you transferring next Ooh, okay next guy on the block a guy that i'm a fan of Caden. Samanza, quarterback, Ball State. What's the temp at? I'm going to say hot. Ten words or less. Last man standing. Don't forget freshman running back, DJ Williams. Okay, okay. Third one. Ethan Gronkemeyer, Penn State QB. What's the temp at? Ice cold. James Franklin is not good for quarterbacks. Ooh, maybe a portal popper here. Another guy I want to talk about, Israel Carter, USF QB. What's the temp at for him? I'm going to say lukewarm. Will the current coaching staff still be there? Okay. Uh, this is my guy playing my flag a couple of weeks ago. Jeremy Heklinski, QB out of Wake Forest. I'm going to say hot. Fits the Wake Forest system. I love it. And another guy most people probably don't even know about that sleeping on, but I know you do. J.D. Davis is second, QB out of Western Michigan. What's the temp at, my man? I'm going to say warm. Fun okay. player, needs a year, don't like Western Michigan system. All right. So those are, those are some names, you know, in this Debbie landscape of quarterbacks. You might want to pay attention to whether it's hot, cold, ice cold, maybe hit the portal again. These guys have a lot of talent, and the value will shift in the market depending on um, the battle, the landing spot, injury. It, it, it all that matters if they get their opportunity to shine. But these are guys that you want to take a look at. All right, Andy, we appreciate you, you know, taking time out of your busy schedule. Talk some Debbie with us, DJs here. But before we get into the body of the show, let us all know, and the viewers at home, talk about how you, you go through your process uh, of evaluating quarterbacks and how you rank them in Debbie. With the quarterback position, it's very volatile. And we've seen guys, their values have taken a hit. You know, Jewel R, you know, he was someone I was telling to sell all last summer before the season started. His values dipped. Malachi mm -hmm. Nelson, Quinn or Spencer Rattler, DJU. Like, we all know that Debbie, the Debbie hit rate is pretty low. So I try to minimize the risk by evaluating their film. I want to see if they can make those necessary throws. Can they layer their passes? Are they able to anticipate? Can they throw their receivers open? Are they willing to climb the pocket? Or do they just want to escape the pocket because they don't like any of the pressure? Do they not like people around them? When they scramble, do they keep their head up? Are they looking down? Are they, are they looking to run? Are they looking to pass? Do they have the velocity do they have a change up or is it just a fastball you know one throw that everyone at home can kind of judge is if you're on the far hash and you can make the throw to the opposite where the ball doesn't leave the screen you can kind of see the ball the entire time that's how you kind of know that a quarterback has the talent has mm -hmm. the arm has the power and he doesn't need to put air under it if he needs to put air under that kind of a throw you know he's not going to be at that next level i also want to see if if someone is able to make those next level throws if they're able to make that i know they have that in their arsenal i also look at the intangibles, you know, you look at my QB1, Garrett Nussmeyer. He's big 
been with LSU the entire time. LSU pretty much paid a huge lump sum with their NIL collective for him to stay because they know the talent that he had. So I look for all those things combined into, into one. And one final thing, I don't like guys bouncing from school to school. To me, that's a red flag. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I love like, – listen, if you weren't paying attention, my man went through a, a defined process, okay? Like things that should stick out to you is the hash-to-hash -hash throw. Like we, if the ball – like he said, in the screen. We don't want this, you know, rainbow throws. We, we want strict bias spirals, straight line, beeline. You can see it the whole time. Um, like he said, the intangibles, I love it all. But, Andy, we're going to break down – QBs on the come up, maybe on the rise, or maybe in the future. Um, I'm going to give you five names amongst three classes, 24, 25, and 26, and I want you to tell me a little bit about them, what you feel about them, and, and how you would rank them at the end of it all. All right? All right. First one off the block, Julian saying committed to uh, Alabama. Now he's at Ohio State. George McIntyre, Tennessee commit. 2025. Walker White, Auburn, Jared Curtis, 2026 class, and then Julian Lewis, 2025 class, USC commit. Talk to me. I'm going to say the first one is Julian Lewis. He is the most complete quarterback of the bunch. He is effortless in his throws. He is effortless in everything that he does. I love that his arm talent is there. He makes all the throws that you want. Absolutely love his accuracy is power everything that you want to see he is able to make off platform throws with ease real good pocket navigation he senses pressure will climb up the pocket mm -hmm. he is someone that i absolutely love uh, for the upcoming class second i'm going to say this is a tough one i'm, I'm, I'm gonna say jared curtis the okay. ball just simply jumps out of his hands he's a real fun player to watch i'm looking forward to see what he does in the upcoming season when you watch him throw the ball just literally jumps and it just skyrockets and i absolutely love it you can throw it deep you can sling the rock I absolutely love it I'll, I like that projection. You know, we saw what he got to do as a freshman and want to see what he does in the next couple of years and how he climbs. So I'm going to say he's number two. And number three is going to be Julian Sand. He was my QB one of this class. He is the most pro ready. He's really a good – he's a good point guard. He is someone that is really good at just throwing the guys open. That's what Ohio State wants to do. He takes care of the football. He doesn't throw a lot of interceptions. He is someone that is going to fit right into what Ohio State wants to do, and that is someone to just distribute the ball to the receivers, let them create in space, be protective of the football, and don't run all around. That's what Ohio State wants. That's what Julian saying is. Is next guy I'm gonna say is gonna be George McIntyre. Um, my thing with him is he gonna stay at Tennessee? I mean, Nico's there for at least two more years. Does he decommit? Does he reopen and kind of go elsewhere? That's just my only question with him. But I, I like everything about him. I, I really like this upcoming class. And the last for me is gonna be Walker White. He's the most raw of the bunch. You kind of saw him struggle in the spring game. He's got that for people that haven't seen him, he's kind of like that Will Levis mold. So he's probably the last in that group, but by no means is he a bad prospect. All right. I, I like to break down. It's funny you say like the Will Levis mold. That's my guy. I actually am a fan of Walker White. I think that he can. Hopefully take over the, the Auburn quarterback room. I don't know what it'll be this year. It seems as though Peyton Thorn. They're putting all the pieces around him, right? So they're, yeah. they're trying to get the best out of out of Thorn. Now, a couple of questions I have for you about this group of guys. Wood seems as though the rumors are swirling, and I don't want to be part of the rumor mill, but would this affect his Debbie stock if he does decommit from USC and end up in Colorado? My question with Colorado is, is Deion Sanders going to stay there after Shador leaves? You know, he finished not well last year. This year, you know, we'll have to see, but they go into the Big 12. Is Deion pushing his chips all in to get Travis Hunter drafted and Shador drafted, and then he just goes elsewhere? Maybe he just retires, says, you know what, I'm – 
these the, these kids just don't know what it takes. You know, I I, I can take my talents and do something else, and, and kind of yeah. kind of take the route that he's doing with. Oh, we're we're not going to go to certain cities for for his for Travis Hunter and Shador. That's kind of a premise to say. Well, he's not a first round pick, but then he can say, well. We didn't want to go to that city, so that's what we told him in advance. So, so that's why they didn't pick us. Dion plays chess, so he always has something to protect him. So right. when when those two guys go, is he going to be like, you know what, Colorado didn't see my vision, nobody sees my vision, I'm just going to go off into the sunset and be done with it. So that's my only thing. If he does decommit from USC and go to Colorado, if he were to go. And decommit to you know Georgia because he's from there or somewhere else in the SEC. I'm fine with that. But if it's to a program like Colorado, I would have a little bit of concern. But with the with the portal being open nonstop, he can always leave. So it's not too drastic. Yeah, I I, I mentioned that because uh, recently I've been reading a lot about uh, Lewis because he you know he's my guy in the in the class and I've been pounding the table about him for a while. Uh, it's just it seems as though. It seems as though Dion's going to stay because what I'm reading is they they need a guy. They have nobody behind Shador. They have no crew, you know, locked in or committed to them. Uh, he's trying very hard, and Juju's already come out and said Georgia's not in the picture no more. They got their guy when Curtis committed. So, uh, is, it, is it Curtis? No, it was uh, Montgomery, right? Didn't Montgomery just commit? Yeah, is he in the same class? So, like he said, you know, they have their guy. The talks haven't been as you know. As as uh, often as it used to be, so I think he's already kind of moved on from the Georgia landscape. If he does transfer out of uh, USC, but who's to say that Lincoln Riley will be there, you know, for the long haul as well? So yeah, because with USC, if they go another five and seven, I've always said he is a coach that will turn a Ferrari into a Corvette, and he's yep. done a great job at USC at doing that. <laughs> I love it. Uh, as far as McIntyre, right? He also has a guy we're going to talk about. Uh, I believe. Uh, in the next segment, and, and Jake Merklinger, who is in front of him, behind Nico. So, yeah, I can see the whole transfer thing. Will he stay? Will he not stay? I love the game. I, I love his, uh, you know, all the boxes that he can check, the throws that he can make. You know, he's a bigger kid. So, I, I do like the game. Um, but, yes, there are a lot of questions there. Uh, I love that you have Curtis, too, because the ceiling is just – yeah. Right. So, and in yeah. Debbie, you, you're looking for the ceiling, the guy you think you can get the best out of at the next level. I mean, just, just that one year that you've seen from him, like sky's the limit. Yeah. And if you can do that as a true freshman, and I mean, the, the thing that you can't teach is arm talent. You either right. have it or you don't. And he already has it. And so if he already has that as well, 15 year old i mean yeah. what what's going to happen as a sophomore as a junior as a senior when he really grows into his body and when 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 quarterback coaches get their hands on him and really show him the ropes and how to do everything correctly because everything he's doing right now is pure arm talent and that's just yeah. in what he's doing is just massively insane i love it all right let's get into this round two uh another couple of names here i think will be interesting especially when it comes to debbie value uh i mentioned him earlier uh, Jake Merklinger out of Tennessee, right? Uh, another guy who maybe could be tied to Tennessee, possibly UCLA. We spoke about him uh, on Future Phenoms. Madden, uh, I, am a, I am a Vila, right? He's uncommitted at the moment. Um, another guy who's a free agent, uh, Demarcus Davis. He's in the portal as of, uh, I believe, yesterday. Uh, Ryan Montgomery, who committed to Georgia. And then Landon Duckworth, 2026, commit to South Carolina. Uh, where do you rank them? And tell me a little bit about each guy and what you like about them. My first one, that, and the guy that I absolutely love, is Madden Iamaleva. I think he is just as, if not better, than his brother. He is such a fun player to watch. Truly electric. <laughs> now, he is someone that just has great arm talent. And, and when you talk about arm talent, you have to watch film and see these guys play and see these guys just – throw the bar ball and how effortless it is. And he is someone that has great pocket navigation, can really manipulate the pocket, manipulate safeties and defenses. He has good movement to scramble around too. So he's not just a pocket passer. You know, we, we talk about in this current class, Damon Williams, he's like 5'10", 180. Guys are talking about, if, you know, if he was only three inches higher, he'd be the quarterback one of the class. 
Matt Ima, Ima Maeva is that guy. He's 6'2", yeah. 180 something to change. He is just as fun of a player, just as elusive of a runner. Great arm, great talent. And he he is someone that I want to see go to an open offense where he can be a maestro. Now, currently he is open in his commitment. I've seen TCU kind of be the leader there. I know UCLA has kind of looked into him. My only question about him, and I, I I kind of want to have your take on this. Where does he go? You know, he has the talent for a power four system. Yeah. And I, I want to see him go to that open kind of spread system, you know, kind of like Tennessee, Oklahoma, that kind of a system. But they already have guys there. So right. my thing is, where does he go? You know, what, what's your take on that first and foremost? And I'll, I'll go on to the other players. Yeah. So that that's kind of a reason why I put him on, on the, on the dock is because the talent and everything is great. I just don't think he wants to follow in his, his brother's footsteps. So like, I feel like, and I've said this to you uh, off screen before. I just, I don't tend to see being a play there. I think he wants to be his own man. They went to the same high school. He's already done all that, right? He doesn't want to keep doing, uh, you know, filling in the shoes of his older brother. Um, I truly believe, and I, I love that you mentioned that the, the wide open, like the air raid style of play, like just, just chuck it and duck it type of play. And and UCLA, I've been on camera saying, I feel like he could really be a player for him. Getting, you know, an NFL kind of coaching staff over there, right, with Foster and the pieces that he's bringing in. People are interested in what's going on there. And a lot of these guys in his class have already come out and said they like what they're building at UCLA. But if we were to stay in like the SEC Big Ten, I don't see a Big Ten school really coming and play and grabbing him because I don't see a big spread offense where he can get out there and just chuck the ball around really. Do, do you in the Big Ten at all? With the with the landscape, I don't think anyone – I mean, if, if he's looking at TCU, then, you know, a uh, mid-tier program – you know, maybe like a Purdue where it is kind of an open system, but why go to Purdue, you know? So, like, my only thing is the talent is there, but the schools that he's looking at or the schools that's looking at him isn't there. So that's just my only concern with him. Mississippi State? I would like that or, or, even, or even Louisville. What about um, Baylor? Baylor, don't they have someone? Yeah, they have um he just what's his face? They have Finn. But don't 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 they have someone else in the pipeline though? But I mean Finn Finn, I mean Finn's gonna have what one year left. Yep. So I mean he's got that if, modified air raid system mm -hmm. there. That works. And I mean, yeah, with UCLA, it could be a fit. There's no one in the system there. So that would be wide open. He would probably start day one. And, you know, with Eric B enemy there, you know, you don't really need talent. It's about the system. That's so they don't really have to get a five-star wide receiver. They can get a bunch of three- and four-star athletes and just kind of get them into space and just have Matt and just – out there just you know slinging it left and right and just throwing it deep and he kind of air it out so like oregon did with bow you put yeah. the pieces around him right and, yeah. and you can do that there like eugene and, and and the ducks there was a there was a five-year period between the magic that they had for about 25 years right until just recently there was a little bit of a lull in there and they brought ball in and they changed the landscape and what they do they put the pieces around and they Got a new coach, new system. But anyway, I'm telling you, Madden with the enemy and Foster over there, they can make it work. And this kicker have the keys to the car the day he puts his foot on campus. And it would be a great hire for UC or a, a great recruit coming in for UCLA yes, and Eric the enemy because he's already in your backyard. Keep him home, mm -hmm. you know, you know, because you you can then say, you know, we grabbed him. He's a local kid. USC didn't want you. We wanted you kind of kind of build up that chip on his shoulder. Get him going from day one. I do like that. I do like the player. So yeah, I mean, but I I don't want to see him go to TCU. I mean, TCU's no. got TCU has Hoover, and they also got a uh, Haas Haney from yep. this current class. I just don't think that would be a good fit. So yeah, I would like uh, UCLA. That that is kind of nice. I got, a, I got um, another team, maybe yeah. possibly Florida State. For my thing with Florida State, they have Chrome and Hook from, from this year's class, and they always go to the portal. 
That's my only thing with Florida. I heard he's going Florida to the portal state because with Florida State, they they go they go for the portal at yes. all the positions: quarterback, running back, receiver, tight end. And I I know that Norvell said that he would kind of limit that as he got his guys in, but he's still doing that year in and year out. You know he he grabbed uh, DJU, he grabbed a couple of running backs there, grabbed a couple of wide receivers from there. So I don't know if I want him at Florida State. And even if Croman Hulk transfers out, and, and Croman Hulk is a guy who's really raw, so he he's not someone that's ready at right. all. So I, I I definitely see why Norvell grabbed him because he needs a couple of years, and I, I see why he grabbed DJU because he there was no one else there. So my only thing with that is just that just that history of getting transfers left and right. I would say yeah. no. All right, I can see. I just. I figure the system, the success they've had lately, possible move out of the ACC. Yeah. There's no depth there. It's what? It's it's Chrome and Oak and but Glenn, Brock Glenn, I think. Yeah. Yeah. There's, so, there's nothing. Yeah. yeah <laughs> stuff. All right. To talk to me about uh, the other two I, gentlemen. My next guy, I'm going to go with Landon Duckworth. Yes. Love the upside. He is someone that's going to be a plug and play after Lenora Seller moves on. And South Carolina will just have a string of quarterbacks that will just go on to the next level and to the NFL. And Landon Duckworth is that next guy. Love his game. Love the upside that he presents. So he is second. Third, this one was tough for me. I'm <laughs> going to go Ryan Montgomery. I, I, I like him, but I don't love him. I like the arm talent. I don't love the arm talent. I hate his footwork. He bleeds a lot of power through his footwork. And I just don't – I I I think he is someone that needs to be coached up. You know, he is someone that I think – if he goes to the right system, gets coached up, kind of doesn't leak all that power that he is leaving behind, I think he could be something at the next level. And then the very last one, I'm going to go with uh, Demarcus Davis. He'll be a last one. I I don't understand why he didn't enter the portal as, as soon as Demond Williams transferred in. That's when he should have went out. I, I, I don't know why he stayed for those extra three three months. And and, and then you're going to leave before the spring game so you don't even get to showcase yeah, your stuff. I understand yeah. that he had to put his name in there because the portal closes in two days, so I get that. But it's just like you had all this chance. You should have just entered in as soon as he put his name to go to Washington. Yeah, I I, I agree. I, I I couldn't understand it uh, as to why he didn't um... – go right away because obviously when they brought him in the youth movement was there they were going what what youth we youth movement guy they wanted right and they went out and got their guy so yeah i, I i'm kind of confused i'm interested to see where he lands right because he's still in the portal here um i love what south carolina's building man you know sellers yeah reno duckworth that they're just putting you know they're, they're getting that depth they're getting a guy a four or five star guy every single year Back to back to back, and it just trying to build it and, that and way. The, the you got with, yeah, and, and, and the thing with that, the one person that will never get credit that should get credit is Spencer Rattler. He yep. went there. He he was that that. That, that that blueprint he was the first guy to go there and say you know what i trust this system i trust the coaches i'm going there he went there he developed changed his whole perception that people had of him he started the whole thing and then sellers came in and reno came in and now potentially duckworth so it's all because of spencer rattler he paved the way for potentially south carolina to have this legacy of quarterbacks to come and 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 the thing, speaking of Spencer Rattler, because he's both of our guys, we, we've been yeah. you know both pounding the table about Rattler in this draft. Uh, I, I've I've read multiple well, sources say that they had him at a mid second round grade. Um, that Denver and Atlanta really really liked Rattler, but they got their you know Penix and, and Bo Nix in the first round, so that kind of changed everything for him. You know, and, and if if the Raiders hadn't taken Penix. There and things changed. He was going to the Raiders, probably, you know, or, or possibly um in that second round aspect. It so it would them two guys taking him, taking their quarterback in the first round changed his value per se because teams that were really interested in him 
we're no longer uh you know in the market but but the one good question. thing about it though yeah. is, is he he goes to a great spot with new orleans you know he, yeah that that is a spot where he is made to succeed you know he's gonna sit behind car for probably a year and then they'll let you know car move on and you have olave you have uh, kendra miller who's waiting in the wings and you have at perry yeah at perry you know it is it's made for him and you know i i've said it all along rattler needs a year to sit so all those ghosts that he sees all the defense all the guys coming at him he needs a year just to sit and know that you know that's not going to happen to him every time because as south carolina even towards the end at oklahoma he had no offensive lineman he had to throw the ball in under two seconds he was Thank under you. pressure all the day yeah, I, I I agree. I've been saying that for so long. I've gone to so many beasts of people. Yeah, you can say whatever you want to say about oh his accuracy. It's difficult to be accurate with a deep ball when you got less than two point five seconds to throw the ball and you got sacked seventy nine times in two seasons. So yeah, that that will affect a little bit of the accuracy with the deep ball. But if you look, take the last six weeks, the last of of twenty twenty two, and this season combined. Man, he turned it around. You can't hold that Netflix series six yeah. years ago against him. The kid has matured. I saw him at the senior bowl. We spoke to him, and he said that was his biggest, you know, asset was his, you know, growth and development yeah. from where he was, just in his attitude and 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 the kid that he was then to where he is now. Uh, I, I love it. I and, and that is the culmination of a Debbie Degen, right? You degenerate. You never let go of your guy. Your guy you think can make it to the next level because yeah. you see. In that prospect, and he went up down the valleys right up at the draft. They but what maybe at this time next year, we'll talk about that Debbie you know, prospect that hit because now he's the starting yeah. quarterback for New Orleans Saints, which is a perfect segue to a, I know everybody's got a sleeper, right? In, 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 of a prospect that you know, maybe not everybody might know about, but give me your quarterback sleeper in this 2025 class that you really, really like. My sleeper is currently a four-star in the composites. He is Malik Washington. He is 6'3", 200 pounds. He is a dual-sport athlete, scored 1,300 points as a guard, varsity all three years at basketball. He is focusing just on football for a senior season. He is currently deciding between Penn State and Virginia Tech. And if you haven't watched him play, you definitely are missing out because he is a fun player. He is a quick processor, very very good at reading defenses, a decisive thrower. The ball just simply jumps out of his hands, and he has a fastball and he has a change. He knows when to use each, and he is someone that can layer his throws with ease. He doesn't fight the ball for. He's a very easy, very natural passer. He is someone that will throw his receivers open. And what I like about him is on crossers, what you'll see is he will wait for his receiver to get past the first window and wait to get to the next window. He's willing to take a hit, but to give his receiver extra time so he doesn't get punished over the middle. Now, he is someone that senses pressure well. He has great pocket navigation, a really good runner, great vision as a runner. He is someone that gets up to full speed within strides. He is an absolute fun player to watch. He has improved from his first to his second year to his second to his third year. I'm looking forward to his final season and where he goes in college. Is, is he a plug-and-play guy at Virginia Tech behind drones right now? My man is a plug and play as soon as Kyron Jones leaves for the NFL. I love it. Uh, I've watched a little bit on Malik Washington. His game is good. I told you, I, I was surprised that he just went full football. When you're averaging close to 26 points per game and double digit rebounds because you just happen to be good at basketball, right? That just tells you about how good of an athlete the kid can be. Yeah. Um, he's one of the guys that just jumped off the page for me when I look at not committed. The athlete he is, you know, the four star. I think is a disservice to him. I think they should give him that that fifth star. Yeah, he deserves it. Um, but yeah, I love the sleeper, and I this kid that I'm gonna be watching out for, um, the rest of this year and see where it goes. If he goes to, you know, replace my guy, I I, I think you're gonna see the same performance, the same product on the field right off the rip without any hiccups. So. Uh, I love it. This has been a great episode, right around the 30 minute mark. I love it, Andy. Before we, you know, we we. Let the viewers go here and let you go home. Uh, let them know where they can find you and, and your tag. 
Yeah, you can find me uh, on X at Andy underscore fam one. You can find all of my work, all of my content with the Devi Royale behind their Patreon paywall or through their Substack. No, I love it. Now, my man is, is A1 content. You want to talk ball? This guy, he, know, he knows what he's talking about. So go give him a follow. Uh, and, and he's humble. No matter if you're a top notch guy or the guy at the bottom of the pole, he just went. He has no problem taking questions and talking shop with you. So it is my brother from another mother. If you want to check us out? You can check you know, check out this episode. Or check us over at uh, the League Winners and our Future Phenoms every week. We're over there. And once again, this is Debbie Dejens. We out.